for invention, for example. Remember that interface I showed you, or the data cores? Those have to be put inside the lab that you're doing the inventioning in. So for example, I do my inventioning in, in this mobile lab up here. That's going to take me a second to get to... Uh, there's my little ship. It's going to take me a second to get down there with my... Uh, there we go. With my a uh, afterburner. Or not even that, It was. it's a micro warp drive. Okay, just a second. So I'll just show you here. So inside here I've got two uh, interfaces that I use. I've got no data cores, so I usually just buy them when I need them. And when you finish an invention job, let's say you're successful. So by the way, there I probably forgot to mention, uh, there's only a chance with invention. And it's usually about, the best you get is about 30% chance. So you often will fail. But if you win, if you get a successful invention, the blueprint, the T2 blueprint will be inside the lab here, outside in space. It'll be inside here. These have little uh, storage. Same with copying. If you copy, uh, you don't have to bring the original out here because you can have an office. Offices are in stations and you need an office to uh, in the system that you're in with your player own station and from that office in the station you can run copy jobs and ME and PE jobs uh, from so you don't have to come out here with the original and put it inside the lab but if you copy with the original from an office in a station the copies that you get out of that will appear inside the lab the original blueprint will pop back out in, in your office space same with you do if you do PE or ME the uh, when it's, it's finished it will appear back in the office space it won't be out here in the labs um, all right I think that is it uh, so this has been a tutorial on labs and also player owned stations player owned stations are fairly in game so don't expect to get them the next day but uh, they are pretty awesome when you get up to uh, probably a billion isk if you start doing billions of isk uh, well, at least half a billion, then you might want to consider a tower. I would consider at least the fuel costs are kind of your uh, your problem, right? Um, towers cost money. Um, I don't know what the cost is nowadays. I remember a while ago I figured it out. It was I think it was about 50 mil a month. Maybe here I'm just gonna take a second here and get out my old calculation. I have an old spreadsheet here. I don't this is not going to be accurate you know what maybe I will uh, I'll take a second here off camera and I'll let I'll update the prices and see what it actually costs these days uh, because that's very important because that's going to determine what you copy you don't want to use you don't want to uh, uh, start anchor a player owned station for the purposes of making money which is copying and then uh, you're copying stuff that once sold on contract you lose money because of the fuel costs that's a problem right another thing I should mention perhaps while I'm doing this is another really nice benefit of player owned stations is you can uh, anchor manufacturing slots you can anchor um, what are they called assembly arrays and I used to do that. I used to actually build orcas out here. Um, I used to, yeah, build and, and freighters too. Because the assembly arrays, I think it was a large assembly array, is for orcas? Or maybe that was battleships. I think it was a capital assembly array. It was orcas and freighters. And then what I had to do is, what you have to do is, so you have your, you anchor a large assembly array or a capital assembly array, you have to haul all the materials out and put it inside the array and then you start the job you can leave the blueprint original inside the uh, uh, your office in, the, in your station but all the materials have to come out so all the minerals or all the capital components have to be dumped into the array out here and then you can start the job I remember capital ship array I think had three slots and I used to build freighters and workers out of it. 
And then when I was done, I what you do is you you move the freighter. It's a repackage, so it's got like a little quantity one. You drag the freighter into the uh, maintenance array, and then you can get into it. Then you can uh, assemble it, and then it becomes huge. In, it's still in the uh, maintenance array, though. That's something else you anchor. And then you can pilot it. You can, uh, uh, what's it called? There's some, I don't remember now what it's called. Like, what? Uh, uh, no, what was it? Activate? No, no, no. I don't remember now. It's You get into it. There's some term. You get into the ship, pilot the ship or whatever, and then it would pop out, and then you'd go, you would go inside of it, and then you can fly it out. But for a while, I used to make providences because they were good money, and but I couldn't fly the providence. What I had to do is I had to give... Oh, I forgot to talk about this. I forgot, I forgot to talk about the shield. I had to give a buddy that could fly the providence access to my station so he could fly in because right now this shield doesn't let anybody in. Uh, they get repelled if you come too close. Uh, but I gave him access. There's a password that you type in. And that's how you get into the these uh, force fields. I gave him access so he could come in with his pod or with a shuttle. And then he would, because I, I would launch the ship. You can launch a ship and just send it out pilotless, uh, empty. And then he would get into it, fly it to Jitta for me. And then I would then he would tr contract it back to me. And then I would sell it, and I would give him a little cut. I can't remember. I get, maybe I gave him 50 mil or something like that, or 10 mil, or I gave him money to fly it for me because it takes up his time, right? Eventually, I could I gain the skill to uh, fly the Providence on my own, but still, that was a, uh, a logistics issue, right? I think I talked about this last video too in the manufacturing video. Um, if you can't pilot the ship, you got to move it. If you can't move it because it's a freighter, you got to get someone else to move it for you, and that's what I had to do for this. So let me just say briefly, the force field comes on when you have an online player-owned station, and it uh, it stays on. You can add a password and um, let people in if you like. You just tell them the password, and that lets them in. Another thing I guess I could mention briefly is you can anchor, like I've got these um, jammers here. You can anchor warp scramblers. You can anchor guns, and you can tell the guns when to fire. There's different... Uh, there's different settings. I guess I'll do this, do that briefly because I don't know who's gonna. If you're at this stage, you don't, you won't be watching this video. Um, so uh, attack of at war. So if I'm at war and someone comes by, then they'll just shoot automatically because then there's no Concord influence or Concord intervention. Uh, attack if if other security status is dropping. I think that's just merely a defense, defensive. So if he attacks you. And it'll shoot back. I think that's what that is, but I'm not sure about that. Um, I think you can also have them set to attack um, anyone that isn't blue. And what that means is you can set your standings with people. And if you can set people as red, as negative, or they can be neutral, or they can be blue. I think there's ways you can set so the gun shoot at anybody who isn't red. Uh, or I mean who isn't blue. <laughs> Or is it? Or I think you can set them so it shoots at only red. I don't know. Okay, um, so I will be back in just a second. I'm just going to do a little calculation here. I want to figure out what it costs me to uh, run this medium tower dread gurista. So it has a little bit of a fuel reduction cost. But so I'll just be right back. Okay, so I did the calculations up, and I just uh, checked the fuel, the market cost of the fuel blocks, just to make sure I wasn't out to lunch. The number is actually quite staggering. I haven't calculated in a long time because I've done some changes. Like I said, these fuel blocks came into existence. So I figured out the cost per cube, which is the... you got to buy the blueprint, although I forget the blueprint cost. Um, enriched uranium, oxygen, mechanical parts, coolant, robotics, nitrogen isotopes. So that one is dependent on the race. So nitrogen isotopes is for Kaldari, which makes Kaldari fuel blocks. If you're in Mimitar space or Amar space or Galente space, you're going to need that race's fuel block. For, or I'll, you're going to need the fuel blocks for the tower. You can put a Galente control tower in Kaldari space if you like. 
the Galente Tower is going to need then Caldari charters, those papers, but it will still need Galente fuel because it's that's the kind of tower it is. So I have a Caldari tower. So this is the, uh, I need Caldari fuel block. So that's nitrogen isotopes for Caldari. And then liquid ozone and heavy water. All of those, um, using a blueprint, the, Cald uh, the Caldari fuel block blueprint I've got right here. All of that equals just under 21,000 isk a block. Now to make sure I wasn't out to lunch, I looked at the market. And here's the market. This is in the forge. So the price will be a little bit better in the forage region, but that's not bad. There it is right here, 24,000, et cetera. So people are making about what? 10%, um, 15% uh, markup, which is about, about right, I guess, for that kind of stuff on the price of making it themselves. So about 21K a cube. Now, the towers consume so much an hour, so many blocks an hour. My tower is a medium tower, but it's a dread gurista, so it's got a bit of a reduction. My tower uh, consumes 16 blocks an hour. That is 332,000 isk an hour. That's un a little under 8 million isk a day. And a month, that costs me a little bit under 240 uh million esk a month <laughs> for this tower which I didn't realize that I don't know if I'm making money I have to figure that out all my what I do with this tower it's mostly copying stuff um, uh, this tower cost me 240 million now for a comparable a small Kaldari tower no race on it or no um, like pirate uh, fuel reduction consumes 10 blocks an hour that per month is 150 mil a month. So you got to make sure you're making that much money to have the tower at all. Now you could be a big alliance and you could eat that cost because you want to have private labs for your members. I used to be an alliance and I ran the labs because I had all the standings. And what I did, what you, know, what you can do as a uh, tower moderator, tower owner, is you can set on each of those little lab slots, you can set a charge per hour that a person has to pay you to use your labs. You can only do that for members of your corporation. You can't offer your tower up to the public. You can't do that. They have to be in your corporation. They have to be in your alliance, actually. They have to be in your alliance to do ME or PE. Um, if they're going to do invention or copying, they have to be in your corporation. Uh, but you can put a charge on the lab slots, and then if they go to use it, they have to pay money per hour up front, and that is goes into the corporation wallet. So that's a way you can fund if you want to join, and this is actually quite common. Um, alliances will have lab corps, and lab corps will, will run. There'll be usually very few members because of the standings, remember, unless this is null sec and you don't need standings. Um, small little corporations will be the lab corporations and they will run the labs for the alliance they'll run the player owned stations I mean for the alliance in a high set corp and they will charge members often for usage which makes sense because how do you recoup the fuel charge uh, so yeah so that's it I guess for labs and uh, player owned stations so end game end game not for the not for beginners <laughs>